Hello everybody, Dren608 here with another video episode for Unconditional Surrender in Europe, designed by Salvatore Basta, published by GMT Games. This is the um, East First series. Uh, I believe we will be starting June here. So uh, let's bring up the weather track and the player eight card. Uh, I believe the first thing that happens is we roll for weather. We will be using the June with May fair line, so 50-50 chance of fair weather in the cold zone, which is where we are um, in the middle of War of Russia. It's 1941, um, June of 1941. Germans really need to try and take down Russia this turn so that they can shorten the war. Uh, and the first die roll is a 3-2-1, or 3-2-3, and if you look at this line, uh, 3 is fair, fair, and fair. So nothing changes there. Uh, which is bad for the Russians. They really needed a mud turn to kind of slow things down. Um, went to the declaration of war. There was no declarations of war. Uh, we're going into the economy phase. Uh, I'm going to kind of scroll through it. You can see the counters move as necessary. The Russians are up to uh, 6 plus 6, 12, 24 production points. So that's good, but they're down to 19 will, so um, the fair weather turn. Uh, we're going into strategic warfare, I believe, here now. Uh, we didn't advance the... There we go. Strategic warfare, um, he rolled a 5. I rolled a 6, so nothing happened. Um, net of 6. Net of 5, net of 6. I always tell you the net number... Um, I don't say the die roll and the plus. It's a little quicker that way. Uh, we're into strategic movement, and I think... I have no idea what he just moved. Uh, is this his move? Yeah, he brought a Romanian up to kind of bolster his river line here on the Donets. Um, Sure, if the Soviets did one here, yeah, I think they did move somebody. Yes, yeah, so I took the guy that was up uh, north in the woods here, and thought I should uh, put him down here in Ryzan because he's probably going to get adjacent to Moscow and then cut all these rail lines. Um, I do have a couple units to build, so I'm hoping to be able to build them like Kalinin and maybe even Bologoya if I don't lose it this turn. Um, then we go into Axis Operations, so here we go. Um, and... Uh, oh, this is me setting my control markers there. So he activates this garrison unit, and has it come up and capture Orel, because I backed out of Orel trying to preserve the Russian army. I'm trying to make sure that I survive till July because if he can't... If the the strategy here is I don't think I can hold out for three fair weather turns anyway. So the idea was I needed to get myself at least to July so I have an extra year of war with the Russians to come back in. And the other thing was is if I can actually somehow squeak out till August, there is a die roll that could possibly make the Russians stay in the war for good. So... That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, don't know that it's going to work. So now he moves up his uh, Panzer unit. Second Panzer comes up here and is going to try and take this city. Uh, I think he's also hoping to blow up the uh, Russian army. Uh, and if you count, that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think he should have three left, four left. Oh yeah, he started along the river. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So he has four movement points left. And then we're setting it. Uh, I think we're in combat commitment here. Of course, we both. I committed, and he did not, which surprised me. I thought he would throw his airplane in right away, um, but he didn't. So. Um, 
I got an extra plus two. And I also threw in my tanks to make it plus four. I was hoping to get an AS result here and just stop this, you know, right in its tracks. Uh, he rolled a seven. I rolled a nine, which was just, I just missed it. Seven to a nine was a diamond. If I could have rolled one higher on the pip, I would have stopped that whole attack and it would have ground his offensive, I think. As it was, I didn't get that, so he went ahead and, you know, did it another attack. Uh, reset my die roll modifier down. And uh, we're back into combat commitment again. This time we both committed. Um, and then now we're going to airplane fight because he's at minus two and I'm at minus five. Uh, essentially, I can't get better than a one no matter what I do. Uh, so he just uh, took a sortie on his airplane here in a minute. There he goes. Didn't matter what he rolled. He was only going to get one sortie on me. So we didn't even bother. It's math. Um, There's no way I could get sorties on him. So he's just going to take one sortie. We both got through. Um, actually, I think yeah, because at minus two he can't get a DD, which would stop my airplane from getting in. Um, so I came back up here, and then I believe did I just use the airplane? Yeah, I just used the airplane. Um, I only have three tanks markers, and I was worried about possibility of some attacks up here. And maybe some attack down here at Rostov that I might need it at. So I took a chance there. And it panned out. So I stopped that Panzer from taking uh, Tula. So then he activated the next Panzer. And went one, two, three, four. And so he has three movement points left. He's attacking the... I'm not sure if it's attacking the city or attacking the river. We're in combat commitment here. So I threw a tanks marker up here. Um, he threw his airplane in. So he went up to 5 and I went up to 2. He rolled a 10. And I rolled an 8. Which was just enough to not have me get crushed. Uh, and then here... I'm not sure why... No, I, we didn't do combat commitment. Um, so he just basically rolled a 5 with a 3, which was 8. And I rolled just low enough to get a DD. An 8 to 3 um, is a DD result. And so he managed to take it and kill a unit. So he took the city. Uh, and... That was me moving my airplane, and I took his unit with me. Uh, so now I'm down to 14 will. So then he decides I need to take Rostov. He's he's really concentrating on trying to pick off whatever he can pick off. And he's doing a pretty good job of it here. Um, he starts off at, you know, plus one to zero. I believe we go into combat commitment here. Um, he did not commit, which, again, surprised me. Um... So it was plus one to plus two. He rolled a three, and I rolled a six. And a six to three is an AS result. So he was only got the one attack off. Um, and then he moved this army up. And, you know, basically we're doing it again. Combat commitment here. Both committed. I threw up my airplane, he threw up his. And he's plus three to my plus two, and he rolled a four net. I rolled a four net. So I stopped him one more time. And then I think we went into this last one. Pretty sure, yeah. 
And I did not commit this time. I, again, I'm down on a number of tanks markers, so I was trying to save it for a different battle. And he managed to get a grand total of six, and I rolled a two, so I was forced to retreat. Moved my airplane back to Stalingrad, went behind the river, and he took it, and I went down to 12. Well, so he's, you know, and I lost a factory as well. So, you know, he's, he's doing pretty good here. He's captured three cities and a factory, gotten me down six will points. Uh, seven will points because he killed the unit, sorry. Took me down seven, so from 19 to 12. Uh, now he's activating... I'm not sure... Moving a garrison unit somewhere. Or maybe he's doing an air attack? I'm not sure what's going on here. Well, we'll just kind of scroll through and see what happens. There's some kind of an attack here. Oh, I think it's the Africa army attacking across. Is zero to zero. He's minus one for the river, minus one for the city. So we're starting off at zero, zero. Uh, we're going to combat commitment. We both commit. I committed. He did not. So oh, there's my last tanks marker. And he rolled a three and I rolled a six. So again, that stopped his attacks there. So now he brings up another infantry unit. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. I pointed out to him it would be 9 if he attacked from there, so he said, Okay, I'll just attack this infantry instead of the city. Uh, not sure why he's attacking at minus 2. Should have only been minus 1. Oh, he rolled before I did, so he ended up with a net 5. I had a 1. Forced me to retreat. Um, there is a unit in that city, so I retreated to the side. Went ahead and took the hex. And then he moved an infantry from Kharkov into the south so that he could make another attack on uh, Barenz, or whatever, however it's pronounced. Um, we're at combat commitment. I actually pointed out to him that I don't think I had anything I could legally commit at this point. So... He threw his tanks marker, gives him a plus two because he's minus two for going across the river and into the city. And plus two to zero, he got a six, and I rolled another one, so I got, you know, flipped and he took the city. Uh, that's just me putting down control markers. First, now he went up to the north, I guess. Now he's like, okay, I've got him down to, if you look at it, I'm down to uh, 10 willpower. Right? So he's like, okay, just a little bit more and he can take me down. A couple cities, kill some infantry, and he's got me, right? <clears throat> so... Started off at plus three to my zero. I think we're in combat commitment. Both are committing. Uh, this is one where we're both minus two, so die rolls mattered. He rolled a five minus two is a three. I rolled a three minus two is a one, so I took two sorties. He took one. Uh, he went up to plus five. I was at plus two. He rolled a 7. I set his movement points to where they should be before I rolled. <coughs> Excuse me, and I rolled a 3. So I had to retreat. I started to retreat there, and I said, no, wait, I want to retreat to this space. Then he attacked the other side of uh, Bologoya. commitment, I believe. We both committed airplanes again. 
Um, we actually had to do the combat because he, if he rolls a six, it matters. He rolled a one, so it didn't matter. We each took one sortie. Somewhere in here, I'm going to put my sortie on my airplane. There we go, and then it's he rolls a grand total of six, and I rolled a six plus two is an eight, so I stopped that attack. And then he can attack again. Uh, there was nothing left for either of us to commit, so he rolled a six and I rolled an eight, so I stopped that attack. Uh, garrison unit moved out of the way so his ar other armored unit could get in here and take part in this attack. Uh, and it's two to move in the hex, three to attack the guy. Uh, we're at the same thing, so it's seven total. And I managed to... Russian army is rolling really well here. Um, so it came after me again, rolled a four, and I rolled a six. So I stopped his advance in the north. Uh, I think now the Romanians are going to move up. Um, at this point, he's moving things up to make sure that he has a defensible line and a supply route and stuff like that. And then up here, I'm not sure what he did, if he attacked with this infantry. Yes, he did. So he was plus one to my zero. He got a five, I got a three. So I was forced to retreat, and I retreated that way, because it's the only legal one I have. Uh, and he took that hex, and then moved there. So he would be minus two. So he was a zero, he rolled a two. I rolled a six, so. And then he was done. So, I lost two cities in the, three cities in the south and a factory. Lost a unit. Um, so I came down seven. Right? Two, four, six, seven. Eight. I came down eight, nine. So I'm down to ten will going into July. And I wanted to reach at least this point because now. Um, coming up on the next turn, um, this is the British moving, basically the French moved into the line here, so that I have good infantry with armor backing and airplanes preventing, um, <clears throat> in the cities in France for when he comes over. I'm just kind of prepping myself there. Uh, now I'm supplying the British. Now we go over to the Soviets. Um. 34. I have no idea where this is. Where is 3457? Oh. This guy that's way down here in the south uh, went running around to get into Stalingrad. Um, that was the guy that I had moved back so that I would have a retreat route out of Rostov instead of being flipped and then he could kill me. Uh, you know, in retrospect, if I knew what the die rolls would have been, I would have stayed. But, uh, you know, got to play the long game here with the Russians. Uh, so I moved an infantry unit into this thing. And, yes, there's nothing in Moscow right now. But I do have two units to build, and one can be built in Moscow. So I was going over to try and shore up my line along the river line there where he busted through. Um, and I think we did an attack here. which went nowhere. And then I moved another unit um, to try and prevent any kind of run around my end here. Sort of semi-preserving the Russian army. Uh, and 
And then I said I was done, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, I still have units that are, you know, open up here. I only have 10 willpower left. I thought, well, you know, I'll get retreats in the forest, and he'll take this city, and maybe he'll take that city. And I thought, well, I should be able to hang on to at least August and get the die roll for the west. If he takes Bologoya and maybe this northern city, um, there's really nothing other than Rizan left in the south. And all the other c cities are fairly far behind my lines. So I was trying to see if I could get to the die roll in August of 41 here. Uh, we get to the Axis replacements. Uh, you'll see him uh, get his airplanes back up. I believe he only spent six. And then we go into the British doing their thing. We didn't move the, the turn marker, but the Soviets went and spent one for their um, infantry unit that was flipped. And then took down my three guys. So there was nine. And it should leave me, if I remember right, Actually, I don't have that right. I should have been down. I started with 24 and I only moved like 3, 4, 5, 6 guys. So I must have been at 18. I think I'm supposed to be down. Uh, we get to mobilization. Nobody had anything to build but the Russians, so they built their two infantry units. Just put them out on the board, and then one went into Moscow, of course. And the other one went into Kalinin or Yaroslav, and I ended up going in Yaroslav, so I had more flexibility on what to defend if I had to run back and try and defend the Oka or something. Uh, we went back to the upgrade phase because I had uh, upgrades for the West, because uh, I could put in a, a French First Army. I had a couple upgrades for the French, and I wanted to get them in this turn. So the tank replaced the mobile unit, and the mobile unit replaced the guy in Paris, and now we went back forward, and we got to the diplomacy phase, and the axis, the axis skip, yeah, the axis didn't have any points to do it, so we went to the west, and they pulled a political success. Took a chance. I mean, all the political successes are in there. So I was trying to, you know, wasn't going to get much better chance than this. One no supply, no event out. Three political successes in the box. Yes, I could have pulled a political failure and ended up with him being, you know, another pro-Spain or, you know, him activating Italy or something. But he didn't. So, you know, didn't work out that way. I got a political success. If I remember right... We're going to see that was the Russians there. What did I do with my political success? Oh, no, I guess the British were loading the cup. That's what it was. And then I had the um, USSR move. I'm not sure what I did there. What did I do? I had a political success, and I don't know what... Maybe I took the one out that was in Spain? Let's back up a little bit. Oh, no, that's what I'm doing here. Okay. Here we are, going into the West. There's a political success and a political... Two political successes. Sitting out, I guess. And I put them in for the West, and then the Soviets put in theirs. So we restacked the cup for the next turn. That's what it was. Uh, 
We got to end of turn. Uh, we started moving stuff onto the faction cards from the turn track. There's a stack of stuff to move for everybody. Russians got their partisans. The Russians got a Len lease, which is going to help them no end. Uh, so, you know, all sorts of good things happening for the Russians here. Um, then they had a Ural's factory as well, so coming in in August. Now is the end of this turn. So I'm going to take a quick break out here um, and see how much time I've spent and see if we can sneak in July on here as well. So let's turn off all these things and we'll go see if we can add in July. I'll be right back. Okay, I just looked and I'm at like 25 minutes recording, so I'm going to end it on this turn. So this is June of 1941. Um, the Russians have, you know, done, got, lost Rostov, lost uh, Varenza, Tula, and he's pushed across the, the Don here south of Moscow. Um, he did get, started making inroads towards Moscow. I was very fortunate, and he uh, did not manage to make a major breakthrough here in the north in the woods. That's always a crapshoot when you're, I mean, he does have panzers there, but still, um, you know, plus three to zeros, and I was getting retreats instead of uh, kills, and a couple of times I matched him. So by stopping this northern thing, he now is going to be on the cusp of, a, uh, of an issue because it's going to become July. And if he does not declare war on the Western faction in July and give Russia 40 will points, which I don't think he wants to do, then the war is going to go to July of 46, no matter when the West finally does come in. And that extra year for the Russians to try and beat back on the Germans could make the difference in whether I can actually uh, defeat the Germans or not. It depends. If the Germans can conquer France, like in 1942, um, then I'm going to have a much lower... A harder row to uh, to hope. So we're just going to have to see how that plays out, right? Okay, let's go over here to where we always go to end the turn. And once again, I'm Dren608. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, it helps in the algorithm on YouTube to keep these videos uh, up near the top of the searches so that you know, they'll stay longer. The more likes I get, the more likely the video is not to be flagged as inconsequential and be, you know, removed or something. Uh, so, um, until next time, everybody stay safe and bye-bye.